if you feel like I'm getting in in your face, just oh, no, tell me. Oh no, no, you're, back off. you're fine. I'm just putting some glue on here. I'm gonna do some gold leaf. Oh nice. So uh, yeah, get the gold on, or the size first, and then let it tack up. And... I feel like gold leaf is is gold leaf. Gold leafing is is a is a different skill level uh, on its own, and I and I don't know that newer kids are doing them nowadays, but they should. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm it's, it's it's an art. I hope it, it doesn't is, die. Yeah, you know, sometimes I feel like a dinosaur. You know, everybody's gone on to the computers, but they're still. It's all about vinyl now instead of actual pinstriping. Yeah, yeah, it used to be. You know, you'd have to have an apprenticeship, you know, for five years and learn how to do this right. You know. Everybody just grabs a computer and they're right, interested right. sign makers, which I don't know. I mean, that's just all part of the business. But so how, how long have you been into into this kind of work? Uh, it's been over 30 years. So I started, I actually started in 88 and uh, just as a hobby. And then uh, in, if you don't mind, how old were you? Yeah. I was 23. No. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh, 25. I'm testing you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's when. Well, my wife was pregnant with her son, and that would have been 88. So yeah, I think 25. Congratulations on that. Yeah, <laughs> my math is not the greatest, but it's okay. But, uh, I can't blame you for that. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been fun. What what made you get into it? Why why? So you know, you're in your mid 20s, and you go, you know what? I want to start pinstriping. Well, what, you what know, makes you want to do that? Not act. I mean. My, I would hang out with my dad and we'd go to car shows and I'd always see the airbrush pinstriper, the airbrush t-shirt guys. Yes. So every year I'd go get a t-shirt made of one of my dad's cars, you know. And I actually got into the airbrush t-shirt thing first. And uh, that's what I, you know, I thought, oh, that looks like so much fun. And then, uh, so I did that and until I thought, ah, I can't do this, I quit, you know. And, but my wife, she kept, you know, you can do it, you can do it. So, uh... I just kept tinkering around with the Airbrush t-shirts, but then one time I had a, I had some artwork done on my race car helmet, my race car, because it's a drag race, and uh, it was an airbrusher, and because uh, I couldn't do it, I mean, I, I, I kind of gave up the ghost by then, but uh, he had an airbrush class, I'm like, sure, I'm going to do this, you know? Yeah, okay. And uh, we were living in Washington back then, and uh, so uh, Max Kilburn was his name. So I took the class, and he worked at a sign shop. Uh, oh my God, this is so cool! You know? So I would go over there on the weekends and just hang out. Not part of the class. He yeah. just kind of took me under his wing, you know. And he just would hang out with us and teach me things. And we'd go to car shows, and uh, I just soaked up all the knowledge I could from him. And then I'd go home and I'd paint anything. I mean. Or dishwasher, spinders, I mean anything. I would just paint <laughs> The toaster them. oven. Oh, yeah. I mean, serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, I just, that was, it's probably the late, early 90s. And then, uh, let's see, how did that go? Oh, I got a buddy, and he kept pushing the pinstripe. Yeah, you pinstripe. No, 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 I don't pinstripe. I do lettering, you know, because I got into lettering race cars, drag cars for extra money to go drag racing. Yeah. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to stay with that. But then I got tired of him begging me to pinstripe something for him. So I thought, okay, well, let's see if I can learn how to pinstripe. And then, uh, of course, that led into more pinstriping job. And really all I was doing was race cars, you know, drag cars. And then... Well, what I, kind of car was it that you had then? What, what was it uh, that, that, that you went to shows with and that you raced in? Well, it was a 39 Chevy that my dad had. And uh, it was called Old Gold. And we campaigned it throughout the Northwest and stuff at nostalgia races and, and bracket racing. Yeah. And then I got my own car, which was a 2017 Ford Roadster. And that was in the early 90s. And then I campaigned that... Well, I don't know, six or seven years, and then, of course, our growing family grew larger, so uh, right. I sold it to get a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's kinda, priorities in life, yeah, right? Yeah, kind of crazy, but it worked out good. But, uh, but no, I drag race shoot all my life, pretty much, from the time I was 15 to 2017, last time I drag race. Wow. I, got, I still okay. got a car, 
It's a 38 Chevy Roadster, and uh, I, I hopefully I can race it out here because we moved out here in 20 from Washington State, and I love it out here. By the way, it's wonderful. Nice. How long have you been out here? Uh, since. 2020. Okay. And uh, we, we live in Richmond, and uh, I still go back and forth to Washington for work. I'm trying to get work out here, but until I can get a full time thing, you know, gotcha. keep going back and forth. Right on. But, uh, so, are you born and raised in Washington then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, never thought I'd ever leave, you know. It's just one of those things that it's changed so much, and it's just so sad. It breaks my heart, you know, to see what's happening out there. Have you connected with much of the community of pinstripers out here in Kansas City? Yeah, they've been really nice, too. Yeah. We, I, I, I've, I've met a, quite a few of them. In the World of Wheels is a big show we have. Yep. Yeah. And I was there this year. They got nice. invited. Okay, yeah, very was, cool. And wonderful. you rightfully should. It, thank you. Yeah, it was wonderful. They were treating me so nice and kind of, you know. Yeah, there's a bunch of, bunch of good guys. Every time I run into them at a car show, they just, yeah. they, you know, they... They're the first ones that run up and say, hey, Corey. I'm like, oh, hi. Super nice guys. And then Grease the Rama, we got invited to go out there. Good we, show. And, yeah, Great we, show. Yeah, we did that too. And, uh, oh, it's just been really nice. I'm lucky to have a wife that follows and brings me stuff when I forget. <laughs> hey, well, we know you got to love know wives story. for that. You know what I'm you saying? Do. Trust me. Definitely know that. As of right now, is there what have you not done? Or have you done everything on this hood so far? Oh, no, I didn't do the painting on it. So, okay. Um, Wayne, he did the painting on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually what I do on the, the variegated, it can be a little higher tack. Uh, so it's got to be a little tackier for this stuff to okay. find. Yeah. Like uh, pure gold, like 23 karat, it's almost got to be dry before you put it on. Oh wow, yeah, okay. It's just because when you go for a smooth finish with a 23 karat, it's got to be almost flat, you know? So yeah, it really makes a difference. And so it's like just different kind of materials, yeah, especially yeah, like with this, metals being, you know, with the gold this, being a soft metal, it just adheres differently, I guess? Yeah, that, this is a little heavier. Like the 23 carats are super thin. Okay. So this is a little heavier, so it needs a little heavier tack. Gotcha, okay. Uh, it's just stuff that you learn by doing it. Man, when I first started doing gold leaf, I hated it. Oh my gosh. I messed up so much. <laughs> it was terrible. But I just, you know, I'd either be too impatient, put it on too wet, then it's all lumpy and nasty looking. Or you put it on too dry and you gotta do the whole damn thing over it. You know? Yeah. It's like, ah, come on. So, it's really frustrating. But it's actually really rewarding though when you do it right because it's just so pretty well i know there's a lot of this stuff has has a lot of tediousness to this i mean very this, much this, yep. this is a slow yep. process you don't here. want to be in a hurry when you're doing this stuff and i'm like you know why hurry through something do the job right you know now everybody wants to you know, make money make money do it fast Usually when I do something like super fast, usually it don't turn out the way it should. So, I mean, I like to do things in a timely manner because, you know, you're charging the customer by the hour. But sure. you don't want to push it for, you don't want a quality job, you know. You don't want to have some lackluster. So, I, I try to do every job like, you know, you really want to do your best every one. Even if it's a simple job. Cause like this this type of work, it's all in the details. You know, I can do a really simple job, but nice looking. You know, but it's basic, you know, it's a one color, two color deal, you're done. But then you go, you go into gold leaf or airbrushing, it just takes time, you know. Like beveled edging on lettering, I mean gosh, some of the lettering I do, I mean it has four outlines on, you know, and all beveled and shadowed and and it just takes hours, you know, to do that kind of stuff. Sure. And a lot of people, they want that, but you know, there are some people that don't, and that's, which is fine, but 
So usually, like before I start a job, I'll ask him, you know, do you have a budget in mind? You know, because everybody's got an idea of what they want to be. So. I, I have a feeling that that's got to go back to just like people who like to either rest them on or restore old cars that they're paying a shop. I don't know that they realize how many real hours goes into doing all oh, that. Oh, they don't. And no. I, I don't think that's not even the that's not the best way of even making money in the automotive industry because they're really not getting to charge what their hours probably worth. No. Yeah. No, there's, you know, there's a lot of times where I'll just get, I'll put a few more hours in it just because I want to turn out nice, you know, because, I mean, that's why I do this, is because of the enjoyment. I mean, yeah, I want to make money, who doesn't, you know, but I didn't get into this to make tons of money cutting vinyl out or doing the same generic crap over and over. I want to do something different, you know, something that creates your juices, you know, get you going, and right. this is fun, you know, and, the thing is, not very many people can do this, which is kind of cool. I uh, hopefully the trend keeps going, or pe young people want to keep doing this, you know? Because if they don't, it's just going to die out. Because shoot, I'm 59, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of one of the younger ones, which is kind of sad to say. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, crap. We need some younger kids in here to to keep. The trend going. I mean, I don't know. I like the I've idea, a, but I don't know. I've got a grandson. Uh, any day he's going to be born, so I'm hoping maybe I can teach him how to do this stuff. Well, there you, you know? go. Keep yeah, the keep trend that going. going. Yeah, it's going to be the rap paint right there. Yeah. Oh. Who's doing the rap paint part? Are you doing the rap too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing that. Here, I'll get the gold on and I'll start doing the rap paint. Mm -hmm. How thick is that gold? It's not very thick. Thousands? Yes. Yeah, take a little piece here. Ten thousands? Yeah, it's super thin. Right, I gotta have a picture of this. Here, fill out. I mean it's it's super thin. Yeah, it's like oh, I need to get a smile from my buddy. <laughs> there wow. you go. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you're welcome, man. You almost can't even feel it. No, it's, uh, man, when it's windy, any kind of breeze. Man, I've had it to where a ceiling fan is going, and it's just amazing. You have to have it. I'm surprised it's not blowing like crazy. This makes a sheet of paper seem really oh, thick. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like when people, you know, oh, can you do it outside? Go, no, not usually, because... Prefer not to. It's not good. Tell them only during storm seasons. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, the wind, it does blow out here. It's good gravy. The only problem with this stuff, it's messy. Oh my god. I can see that. This is something I, I didn't anticipate that either when I, when I was thinking about it. Yeah. And then as you're doing it, I'm like, well, but they're probably, I wouldn't know any other way to even lay it the way you're doing it. It's like, oh, that kind of makes know. sense. Yeah, I don't know how other people do it. This is just how I've learned how to do it. Yeah. I'm sure there's a thousand different it, ways. It, it's funny how it can look messier or worse or, you know, like, like you got more work to do once you're into it than it was when you started. It oh looks yeah, like that way. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get it. Uh, I'll get all the leaf on here, and then you got to burnish it with cotton, and then uh, I'll clean up the edges and I'll put a clear coat on it. And then I'll let that sit, and then I'll start working on the wrapping. But then I'll come back and I'll outline everything. Okay. So yeah. Then I'll probably do some little, I don't know, do some kind of pinstriping. It's just kind of fun. Now on the rat, is this going to be just... Is, is it's, it'll be a filming cartoon. Okay. It'll all be shadowy and everything. So it's, uh, all hand painted or do you do any airbrushing with it too? No, no airbrushing. I didn't bring my airbrush. We haven't got a year in the books on that yet. As far as the YouTube channel Craven Cars, it's been around since 2017. Okay, very cool. Um, COVID slowed things down there for a little bit, but you know. Yeah. Uh, I tried to keep things going as best I could in 2020. Yeah. And every time I was announcing new shows, they were getting canceled the very next day. And, and so it was like, I had so many videos saying, hey, we got this going on. And then the next video was, sorry, we don't have this going on. And uh, so there wasn't. It was so dull of car shows because of it, I ended up getting together with a friend of mine who collects Hot Wheels. Really? And we had a Hot Wheels car show. Oh my god. 
and that was he had a big board i'm like he goes i got like a really thin gray piece of carpet i'm like let's do it we're painting lines on it and we taped it off and he I bet you that was got some cute. white spray paint. We just sprayed the lines, yeah. and we lined them all up. And I was acting and trying to film it like it was an actual car show. And we even lined up, like fun. went to an empty parking lot. Someone was like, "Well, this is gonna be filled up soon. That's We're so gonna have this cool. car show." And and uh, I bet you that was fun. It was fun to do, and yeah. uh, it, it was interesting. It was very interesting. You had to do something. I, I, at that point, it, we were having fun doing. I didn't care. Yeah. I don't care if I got any feedback out of it. Uh, it was just fun. So. How did it go? Did you get a good feedback on the show? It was okay. Okay. I, I don't know that many people were even looking for shows at the time yeah. just because they knew they weren't going on. Right. And so it, it didn't get out there the same, but it was interesting. And I, and you know, I did the whole camera over the whole thing like it was a drone shot. Oh, God. <laughs> That's So do you enjoy doing pictures like that over just straight like designer pinstriping or do you I like do them both all. equally? Yeah, I like them both. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to have a little bit of everything, you know, do a little bit of striping, doing some lettering and stuff. That's what I like. I like doing it all. Concentration has got to be key here. Oh my gosh. Me talking about concentration is probably not helping.